Hello, welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to show you how to make bags in Clo 3D. This is the part 1 video that includes demonstrations of a tote bag and a handbag. So let's get it started. The first example I am going to show you is the tote bag or you can call it a shopping bag. First step, go to library and choose trim hardware. You want to use a stiff material when you create any style of bag, so it's easier to keep the shape when you simulate. Use rectangle tool to create the shape of the front bag. I am going to make a 16 inches by 12 inches tote bag. Click the rectangle tool then click any place in 2D window to bring out the window to enter the dimension. Or, you can bring out an avatar as a size reference if you don't know the size yet. Add two internal squares for the handle placements. Select this pattern piece, right click. Make a copy and paste. You can use shortcut command C and command V in Mac. Control C and control V in Windows. Use gizmo in 3D window to move and rotate the duplicate rectangle piece to the back. Make sure the backside of the fabric is facing each other for these two pattern pieces. Next, I will create the bottom for the bag. Rotate this piece and make its parallel to the ground. Right click and select move to ground center. Turn on the ground grid in 3D window to help you make sure your bag is in the straight position. By the way, the back side of this pattern piece the fabric will face up because it's the inside of the bag. If you have hard time with the face of the fabric, you can switch to texture surface instead of thick texture surface. This way, the dark side will be the back of your fabric which should be the inside of the tote bag. Select all three pieces, right click and choose strengthen. Use sewing tool either in 2D or 3D window to connect front and back pattern to the base. Follow the blue sewing light in the 3D window to make sure you are sewing both segments in the same direction. I get confused sometimes after rotating to the pattern piece. You can also see the sewing lines to check if they are twisted. If they are, just use edit sewing tool to right click and select the segment line, then choose reverse sewing to correct it. Use gizmo in 3D window to bring front and back close to the base. Select both patterns and right-click to freeze them. Click Simulate. The base is now connect to the front and back. I can see the bottom piece is not totally smooth. I can move either side of the bag bodice slightly then simulate again. And now it looks great. Right-click on the base piece and freeze it. Select all three pieces and bring them back to the ground center. When you make bags, you will be freeze and unfreeze the patterns a lot. Ideally, you want to allow only a couple pattern pieces activated during simulation. As you can see, I freeze front and back bag bodice except the bottom bag during simulation. So I can keep my bag straight and smooth and won't drape or fall when I simulate it. Now I have the, the main structure of the bag, I can start making the side bag patterns using the same method. Bring them as close as you can to the correct position. Strengthen and sew both pieces. Freeze the rest of the bag except these two pieces during simulation.
For this tote bag, I want to make two sides panels fold in. So it will look wider at the bottom and narrower on the top from the side view. First step, I have to create a center internal line within this side panel. Hold shift and select two segment lines, then right click to choose distribute internal line between segments. Click on the internal line, you will see fold in property editor window. Under fold, you will find fold angle. Turn on simulation, adjust the bar of the fold angle. You will see the fold angle of the selected internal line changes in 3D window. Moving it toward 360 degrees will create mountain fold or folds in. Moving it toward 0 degrees will give you a valley fold or folds out. Now, I will use gizmo to tilt front and back pattern pieces. Once I like the angle, click simulate to reposition the side panels. Remember not to unfreeze the front and back bodice when you do this. Add additional internal lines to both sides of the side panel pattern. The lines should be pretty close as you can see I made then only 0.1 inch apart. Select the internal lines, click simulation and adjust and fold angle toward zero. Now I am happy with the fold angle. Select both side panels and freeze them. The last step is to add handles. There are few options you can do. For the first option I am showing you is inserted handles. Select all four internal squares, right click and convert to whole. Then I will add one more internal line below each hole. Create a rectangle shape as handle base and make one side narrower. Use gizmo to move this piece and insert it to the hole. Sew it to the internal line below the hole. Simulate and make sure there's no issue. Right click this pattern and choose symmetrical pattern. Sew this piece to the other side of the hole. Repeat the same process to add two more handle base to the back. Now make a new rectangle pattern the same width as the wider part of your handle base. Create a center internal line. Use fold arrangement tool to fold this piece and make two longer segment lines close to each other. Close both ends by using sewing tool, then attach the end to each handle base. Use sewing tool to sew these two segments together. It's kinda like you are making a spaghetti strap. Lower particle distance on the handle pattern to get a nicer curve. To get a nice handle curve, I usually would select the whole bag and turn it upside down. Freeze the whole bag except the handle parts and simulate. Let it drape naturally. Repeat the same to make the other side of handle. Once I am happy with how it looks, freeze the handle pattern and rotate it back to the normal position and place it to the ground center.
And there, I have made a tote bag. I can start adding texture and top stitch to complete the look. I will quickly mention the other handle options. You can make looped handles. Start with making a rectangle shape. Add internal lines. Use Fold Arrangement tool to fold the internal lines and create a loop. Use Gizmo to rotate and move the loop to the hole. Close the loop using Sewing tool. Right-click the piece and choose Symmetrical Pattern with Sewing. Then merge the two handle back to one piece. Repeat the same to make add the handle to the opposite side. The last option I want to show you is the top stitched handle. This is actually easier to make. Once you create the internal squares, don't convert them to whole. Make a rectangle strap. Use free sewing tool to sew the end of strap to the internal square. When you finish the bag, you can export the bag as OBJ or FBX. This way when you import the bag back to Clo 3D as OBJ, it will stay the same during simulation. By the way, you won't be able to use the bag as accessory in motion to create animation clip, it's only good for rendering. For the second demonstration, I am going to make a handbag. The way to create handbags is pretty much the same like the tote bag example. The base structure is similar, except this time I am going to add a flap on the top. Also I will make a single handle with D-rings. Let me quickly go through the process again. First, choose a stiff material. This time I am bring an avatar to the 3D window as a size guide. Create a rectangle shape next to the avatar. Scale the rectangle to the proper proportion. Once I am happy with the size, I can remove avatar. Create the handbag bottom pattern and bring it to the center ground. Copy and paste the rectangle which will be used as front panel of the handbag. Rotate and move the duplicate panel, make it parallel to the front. Make sure backside of the fabric is facing each other. Bring both front and back close to the base piece. Freeze them and use sewing tool to connect to the bottom. Simulate and check if the bottom pattern fit correctly. If there's no issue, continue adding side panels to the bag. Add strengthen to all the pattern pieces, it will keep bag surface smooth during simulation. Now I have made the handbag bodice. It's time to add the flap on the top. First make a rectangle size that is the same width as the bag. Depending on your design. I usually like to have part of the flap sew to the back of the bag. 
So I will add two internal line and divide the flap into three parts, front, top and back. Right click to strengthen the pattern. Use gizmo to rotate and move to the top of the bag bodice. Use fold arrangement tool, click on the internal line and fold the flap to the angle that will fit that handbag. Use sewing tool to connect the back flap to the back of the handbag. Make sure to freeze the whole bag except the flap. Click simulate. Adjust the flap and make sure it's smooth and fit nicely on top of the bag. If you want to add thickness, you can select the pattern piece. Go to property editor. Under simulation properties, increase amount on the thickness rendering. Switch to thick texture surface in 3D window to be able to see the changes. If you have hard time using fold arrangement or changing fold angles, you can always cut the flap into separate patterns, then sew it back piece by piece. There are many bag closures you can do. The easiest one is magnetic snap which you don't see anything from the outside of the bag. And basically just leave the flap hanging straight. For this handbag, I am going to add a teddy bear head to the front of the bag. Once the flap is finished, it's time to add the handle. First step. Create two internal rectangle shapes on top of flap pattern. Select these two rectangles, right click and clone as pattern. These will be the handle base. Use sewing tool to sew the two handle base pieces to the top of the flap. You can change the design of the handle base according to your preference. Once the handle base is on the flap, I will create a small square pattern. Add internal lines to this piece and strengthen the pattern.
Use gizmo to move and rotate this pattern close to handle base. Use fold arrangement tool to make this piece into a loop. Then connect it to the handle base. To get a nice rounded loop shape, you can select internal lines. Go to property editor and adjust the fold angle slightly until it gets to the shape you want. Go to library folder. Under hardware and trims you will find ring folder. Add the D-ring to the workspace. Use gizmo to move the D-ring close to the loop. As you can see the D-ring is too big. To resize the D-ring, click the square icon next to the D-ring. This will switch it to a gizmo without circle lines. Drag different color lines to adjust the width or height. Or drag in diagonal direction to scale it proportionally. Once you are done, click again on the square icon to switch it back to regular gizmo. To attach the trim to your bag, you cannot use sewing tool. Instead, you will click on the glue bottle icon next to the trim. A gray silhouette trim will appear. Drag it as close as you can to the position you want. When it's a straight or flap surface, it's pretty easy to position your trim with the glue bottle. However, in this case I want the D-ring on an angle. So there's no way I will be able to drag the gray silhouette to the correct position. As long as your silhouette can touch the pattern piece you wanted the D-ring to be. Then you can reposition it with gizmo. Place the D-ring bar inside the loop. Make sure no fabric is interfering with the D-ring. Then click simulate to let the fabric drape naturally on the D-ring. If there's no issue, repeat the same method to add loop to the other side of handle base. Right click the D-ring. Make a copy and right click again to choose mirror paste. Move the gray silhouette until it touches any part of the loop pattern piece. Use gizmo to reposition the D-ring. When it's done, freeze the loop pattern pieces. The last step is to add the handle. Here is another way you can make a curve handle. Bring out a 3D shape from the library to 3D window. Click the square icon next to the 3D shape to resize the 3D shape to the curve you want. Create a rectangle shape that fits the width of the D-ring. Place the rectangle pattern piece on top of the 3D shape and click simulate. Let it drape to the curve of the shape. Lower the particle distance and change the piece to a softer fabric will help to get a nicer smooth curve. Bring the piece back to the bag and see if it works. I think it's still too wide, but I am not going to worry about it for now. I will adjust it later. On both ends of the handle pattern. I will create loops just like that ones on handle base. But this time I am not going to make separated pattern. I will add the internal lines directly from the end of the handle pattern. Strengthen the pattern. Use fold arrangement tool to adjust the angle and fold it into a loop.
Select all the bag patterns and rotate it upside down. Move the handle loop close to the D-ring. Here is what you need to know about using hardware and trims in Clo 3D. You can only glue the trim to one piece of pattern. That means I can only choose to attach the D-ring to the handle base or to the handle. Since the D-ring is in the perfect position with the handle base loop, I don't want to move it. So in this case, I am going to use pin tool from the 3D toolbar to keep the handle in position. Use gizmo and move the handle loop close to D-ring. Insert D-ring to the handle loop tunnel. Make sure none of the fabric is touching the D-ring. Then go to 3D toolbar, find pin box. When you click it, all the patterns in 2D window will turn into mesh mode. Left click your mouse, hold it and drag to create a pin box. You can do it either in 3D or 2D window. Everything you select within the pin box will not move during simulation. Repeat the same to finish the other end of the handle. Simulate and let it drape to a nice curved shape. Once it's done, freeze the handle. You can add thickness to the handle pattern in the property editor under simulation properties. Also after you add the thickness, go up to curved side geometry. Turn on double sided. This will make the handle pattern piece looking like it's sewn from two layer of fabrics. Select all the pattern pieces and bring it back to the right position in center ground. And there, the handbag bodice is done. I am going to add top stitching, change colors and material type and add metal bag feet. If you are not familiar with how to add top stitch, please check out my previous video of how to create sequin and embroidery trim. Once I am done, I can export this bag as OBJ. For this teddy bear handbag, I want to make the teddy bear head in fur. You can only view fur in render. Select the fabric from the object browser and go down to property editor. Under material, you can change material type to fur. Under fur preset, there are a few fur options you can choose from. Once you select a type of preset fur, you can go down to fur shape base. Change the length and thickness according to your preference. Here is the final render for this teddy bear handbag. I changed the bag bodice material to terry cloth. Just in case if you are wondering why the bag bodice is not smooth. So, this is the end of the part 1 video. In the part 2 tutorial, I am going to show you how to create a backpack. By the way, you can download both the tote bag and the teddy bear handbag for free from my connect close set page. I will attach the link in the description. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe.